The death of a loved one is never easy, especially when it happens suddenly. Last year, nearly 1,000 people lost their lives on South Carolina roadways. Today, the South Carolina Department of Public Safety honoring those victims. Our Genesis Neros attended the memorial service at Lexington Baptist Church this morning and joins us now live with more. Jenna. Emily, it's a day of remembrance for the 988 lives lost in 2017 due to traffic fatalities. Today shows the reality and enormity of losing a loved one. It's also a way to educate the public in an effort to prevent future deaths on the roads. The memorial service has been held annually since 1988. Officials say it's a way to help those close to the victims heal and a reminder that safety on the roads is an ongoing battle. The South Carolina Department of Public Safety says it's their duty and mission to keep striving for target zero highway deaths. Speakers today sharing their story, some relating up to others to provide hope. I spoke with one grandmother today who lost her grandson Aiden in a car crash back in 2011. Aiden was less than a year old and died because his car seat was not properly installed. Aiden's grandmother tells me her life was forever changed. Aiden was um, my first grandbaby and he had a very special part in my life and a place in my heart. Again, this is a way that we can honor him and um, share our story with other families so that they don't lose their babies um, in collisions the way that Aiden died. Aiden's grandmother says she comes to the memorial service every year. She says her one piece of advice for those who may also be suffering from this tragedy is to take it day by day. Live in the studio, Genesis Narrows, WIS News 10. Thanks for that, Jenna. Well, taking a look outside, you couldn't ask for more perfect weather to kick off your weekend. This is a look at the blue skies over Lake Murray right now. Now, it may not be quite warm enough yet to take a dip in the water yet, but that'll soon change. Meteorologist Kevin Arnone has your forecast. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous today. We saw those temperatures really. We're at the warm day, part of the day right now. Upper 70s to near 80 degrees, but blue skies, low humidity. And a little bit of wind too, so it's a very comfortable day today. Not too bad at all. Current temperatures out there right now 77, Newberry 79, Winsboro 80, downtown Columbia about 80 right now, Lexington as well. And look at north about 81 degrees. It's certainly just a picture perfect day. We can call it seasonable because our average highs this time of year in the upper 70s to near 80 degrees. As far as your evening, if you're doing anything outdoors, you're fine. We're staying dry. Temperatures fall through the 70s, eventually into the 60s, continuing with the clear skies overnight tonight. By tomorrow morning, we'll see the those temperatures in the 50s. One thing to notice though, the wind. The wind's going to start to kick up as we go through really the evening into tonight. Winds right now from the westerly direction eventually shift out of the north. What that means for you, some cooler weather that's going to be moving in as we go into the day tomorrow. Now, highs tomorrow only going to be in the low 70s, a little bit cooler than where we should be. But Emily, wait till you see the first alert seven day forecast. We have some 80s and even some 90s in the forecast. We'll have that coming up. Sounds good to me. Thanks for that, Kevin. New at six, one person has died after a single vehicle collision in Calhoun County. Officials say it happened just before two this afternoon on Cameron Road. They say a driver was headed north when they ran off the side of the road and hit a ditch. Right now, no word on the victim's name. We're told the driver was wearing a seatbelt. Armed and extremely dangerous. That's how Richland County deputies describe a man wanted in connection to a deadly shooting this week. Right now, deputies are looking for this man, 30 year old Tremaine Richardson. He's wanted on charges of murder and child endangerment. That's after a shooting on Crane Creek Drive Thursday that killed a 24 year old. Investigators believe Richardson is still in the Midlands. If you have any information on where he may be, call Crime Stoppers at 1 888 Crime SC. Well, you know this face. She's the new giraffe calf born on April 2nd at Riverbank Zoo. The new baby girl is part of a survival plan for the species facing a dramatic population decrease in the wild. Now Riverbank Zoo is asking that you help name her. Genesis Neros has a story on why one family thinks they should name the baby calf after their eight year old daughter. When I think of my sister, I think of giraffes. This is Amelia. She passed away four years ago from brain cancer. At the time, obviously, it was extremely devastating, but the community really helped us through that. April's a difficult month for the family, but when they heard the news about a giraffe calf being born at Riverbank Zoo, they knew right away this was special. On the timing's absolutely perfect. We were remembering her this April from passing away four years ago. Um, 
I said at the time, well, Amelia's a great name for a giraffe, and my best friends jumped on that straight away and said, oh, wouldn't that be great? The last day Amelia could walk, she went on a special behind-the-scenes tour of Riverbank Zoo where she got to feed and meet her favorite animal. She walked around and fed them and really exerted a lot of energy at that time. We did not know that was going to be the last time she walked. We didn't know that was going to be the last time she'd be able to voluntarily open her eyes. Now Riverbanks is holding an online auction for rights to name the new baby girl. Amelia's family has raised over $2,500. I could not think of a better memorial for my daughter than naming a giraffe after her. It's really very hard to know how to remember a child. Um, cemeteries, gravestones just don't seem appropriate. You really have to remember the love that a child has for everything in life. Amelia for a giraffe! And all the money raised goes to giraffe conservation. The last day to submit names is Sunday. So if you'd like to vote for the cat to be named Amelia, we have a link posted for you on our website, WISTV.com, where you can donate to that cause. Friends, family, and other mourners gathered to remember the life of one of the victims of last weekend's shooting at a Tennessee Waffle House. Funeral services took place today for 21-year-old De'Ebony Grove. She was one of four people killed when a gunman opened fire last Sunday at a Waffle House in Antioch. Groves was a student at Belmont University. Majoring in social work, the suspect, Travis Reinking, was arrested earlier this week and has been charged with four counts of criminal homicide. A massive manhunt for this man accused of killing a main deputy, stealing his car and then robbing a store. Well, that manhunt is finally over. John Williams is now in police custody after four days of continuous search efforts. Williams is accused of killing Corporal Eugene Cole, who was found dead last Wednesday. Police say the fugitive was captured alive. His arrest is now bringing relief to the community and officers as they cope with the loss of one of their own. My heart that um, the cops just band together. They're just one. When something like this happens, they're just a whole unit. Doesn't matter what city, state, sheriff, anything. Officer Cole's death is believed to be the first law enforcement officer to die by gunfire in Maine in nearly 30 years. Coming up, having a heart for inmates. Today, dozens were in Columbia, highlighting the challenges facing those behind bars in South Carolina prisons the changes they're asking from lawmakers. Plus, a stellar start to the weekend. We'll tell you how long you can keep that rain jacket packed away ahead in your full first alert forecast.